continuing where we left off on the previous problem, uh, we had a one-point equation based off an integrated version of the Arrhenius equation. Uh, so having this one point here with a specific rate constant at some specific temperature, we could analyze this looking at a variety of different temperatures and rate constants. Uh, so I'm going to set it up just kind of looking at two. As an example, I'm not going to go through the whole derivation process, but I'll show you the final equation that could come out of this. That's the lowercase k. Again, my all, all of my k's kind of look like uppercase. So we have natural log of uh, k1 and k2, uh, e sub a, activation energy over r, and two different temperatures. And there's some changes that happen as far as in deriving this equation. But again, at the moment, that really doesn't matter. Uh, having this set up here, if we had a bunch of values, and we'll do that in just a moment, um, this only gives us, of course, two. But if we just kept repeating this process over and over again, we could see a relationship between the natural log of k and the inverse of temperature, which would actually give us a linear relationship with a negative slope. And again, as temperature goes up, we actually would be moving in this direction because of course the overall factor would get smaller, uh, giving us a slope of negative Ea over R, which we already looked at before in the previous part of the problem up here. So looking at this again, we can see a relationship on here. And what we will also kind of uh, be able to determine as uh, the temperature increases, you're actually um, going to see as, well, I'll leave that alone. Uh, it has more to do with the activation energy, but that's something we can actually discuss in greater detail uh, in in-class lecture or a, a lavish type of scenario that we get into at another time. That might be too much for now. Let me pull out the old calculator. And we'll look at a whole new setup. Actually, we put this aside, and we'll get some numbers to put in front of you that you can get us ready. Get the focus going. Good. Okay, so we're going to do some columns. I'm going to spare you a little bit of the pain uh, as far as the setup goes. We're going to have four columns. We have five. So I'll say we have a temperature. And I'm going to put the temperature in regards to Kelvin's. So I had initial temperatures of Celsius, and I had to change it over to Kelvin's. So we're just going to work off this. So 462.9, 472.9, and 524.4. So these are our given temperatures in Kelvin's, and we have corresponding rate constants that go along with them. And these are all happen to have units, not that it matters a whole lot, of per seconds. The values that go along with this, 2.52 times 10 to the negative 5, 5.25 times 10 to the negative 5, 6.30 times 10 to the negative 4, and 3.16 times 10 to negative 3. So notice again, as the temperature is increasing, the rate constant is also increasing. So I have two more columns that we're going to create. And this is so we can work with this equation up here. And of course, we make a graphical relationship that will give us a linear response. Uh, so we have 1 over t, which are our x values as temperature changes it will affect the y which will be our natural log of k so i'm actually going to utilize the calculator for set this setup and we're going to do just like we did in a previous problem Let's see if i still have it there where is it at we'll say edit there we go i've already put some of these values in and get the glare kind of yeah, that's probably okay. Uh, so I've already put those uh, values in for my list one, list two, and I'm just going to manipulate it around for my list three and four. 
So list three is going to be the inverse. So I will say, let's see, list one and inverse. And that populates. Good. <laughs> I sound a little surprised there. Uh, list four will be the natural log of list two. And that looks well, too. Okay, so now that that part is done, I'm going just to throw that into the calculator and see what comes out as far as an answer. What I'm most concerned about, again, is that slope value. So from here, I'm going to go into back to stat, calculate linear regression, and I want to be specific to list three and four because those are manipulated values. So I'll say second list three, comma, second list four, and push this into the calculator. And again, I'm looking for the slope. So when I take a look and say, okay, the A value is negative 19,000. So let me go ahead and write that down here. I didn't actually write these in here. I'll just make a note of that. So let me write down here graphing. So we're keeping track of what we actually did here. Graphing this data. Gives or provides a slope of, again, negative EA over R. And in our case, it's negative 1.9 times 10 to the negative, I'm sorry, 10 to the fourth. Again, it's kind of showing that value where it came from. Close enough. Uh, now remember with this though, we are looking for an answer uh, specifically in activation energy. So we can isolate that. Solving for EA is equal to, we'll call it, negative slope times r, or multiply times negative slope, I'm sorry, negative r, equals, I will say, negative, and 1.9 times 10 to the negative, or to the fourth, times 8.314, and the units that are on there are joules per mole per Kelvin. Now, in reality, this had a units of K. I'm really not going to worry about that too much. We do know that the answer will come out to be joules, though. So given the final answer here at this point is 1.6 times 10 to negative 5 joules per mole of reaction. And if I want to express this, I can. This answer is perfectly fine. But having this in here, I see, I know I can change this over to kilojoules. So actually, I'm going to write 160 kilojoules per mole of reaction. There we go. So that's what we would get for this particular problem. For the next part of this, I'm going to shortcut it a little. Uh, we're going to continue on this problem, but I'm just going to kind of show you a little extra step. So for that, what we can also do is, this is like a part B. What is the value of the rate constant at 430 K. Change that. Calvin, question mark. Okay. So we have to acknowledge what we have so far. We now do have the activation energy. We just figured that out. And we can carry this forward. 
um, we have also a T2 and a K2. And we could change these variables around. I'll, I'll talk more about that in just a moment. And the T1 in the question. So let's take a look at what we are working with here, and this will probably make a little more sense. Again, based upon what we were looking at before, K1 and K2, we have that. Or at least one of them we have. We now have the activation energy, and R is just a constant. We are looking at two different temperatures. In order to do, use this equation, there's three variables, excuse me, four variables we're looking at. Uh, we have activation energy. That's something that is needs to be given somewhere. But one, two, three, four. And so we have to have three of these four in order to work with this. So look at the problem. What is the value of the rate constant? Pick one. It doesn't really matter which one. Uh, we're going to call it um, K1 is what we're looking for. So we need to have K2 at 430 Kelvin. So one and one. These two guys will go together. We have um, EA. So actually, we can pick any other value and put it in here from our previous data and just work with that. So we have lots of different pairs we could use. Uh, I'll show you which one I'm going to pick here. I think it's I picked the last one, I think. So if we set it up and say natural log K1 over 5.25. Times 10 to the fifth. And again, I'm just pulling this off that data that we put together in the calculator is equal to 160, but I have to be careful, times 10 to the third. And again, I'm pulling this from the previous problem. Uh, where was that? 10 to the fifth. So 10 to the third joules has to be in joules and the reason it has to be in joules is because the r value is in joules and then the temperatures is 1 over 4.72.1 minus 1 over 430 which we're pulling out of the problem again and what this will do is it's set up, it's kind of like fun with math. We have all these different parts here. We have to kind of combine like terms and then solve for the one variable we have. So all of this is just numbers. We can take this together, plug it together, get some number to come out of it, and then just go from there. So for example, if I kind of work with all of this and take a natural log or an E, I should say, of both sides, what you would be left with is K1 over 5.25 times 10 to negative fifth and happen to be per seconds is equal to e raised to the negative 3.99 that's just taking care of all of this math and what you would end up with is 0 0.0185 And then ultimately, taking care of this here, K1 would equal 9.7 times 10 to negative 7 per seconds. That's it. Done.